All right. Thank you so much, first of all, for showing up on this call, because today you not only showed up for your business, but you showed up for yourself. And that is so important. Um, so I'm super excited because this is, again, this is what we call a power hour. We are going to take you step by step an hour long to show you things that we do four to five days a week as a team in our business. This is what my team does. And um, I've got a couple of people on here, um, actually three, that um, are helping me with this. Landy Martin, Chuck Holmes, and Michelle Marie. Um, Landy Martin is our first person on uh, my team that has hit um, uh, platinum. And Chuck is about to hit platinum. So we um, definitely, and uh, Michelle is gold. She's on our way to platinum. So these are things that us as our team that we do to build our businesses. And we want to share it with you. We don't want to keep it to ourselves because we know the more that we help others with live good, the more we're all going to grow as a family and we're one big team together. So um, anyways, we're going to start our power hour. So thank you for jumping on. Um, and I'm going to actually let Landy get started um, because she does something at the beginning of our power hour that I never did before um, that is really, I think, helped me level up. So, Landy, go ahead and get started with this. Thank you so much. Woo! Guys, I'm so excited. Courtney, thank you so much for hosting this call. You are absolutely an amazing and servant leader. I'm so blessed with you and Chuck as leaders. Uh, I thank you so much for just being here for our team and I'm excited to where we're going. So I want to talk for a second about our first task that we do. And what we start our power hour with is really how you should start your day with every single day. Um, we start by writing three things in a journal. So hopefully you can have a piece of paper or a journal. We're going to write down three things that we are grateful for. What this does is this puts us in receiving mode. This sets us up for success. If we are not grateful for the things we have, why on earth would we be given more, right? So we're gonna write down three things we're grateful for. We're also going to write down three goals that we have for today. Uh, daily goals are just as important as monthly and yearly goals. So every single day, you should write down at least three goals, three things you wanna accomplish before your head hits the pillow. Now, when you write down these goals, keep them action or activity focused and not results focused. So instead of writing down, I'm going to enroll 10 people today, you're going to write down, I am going to reach out to 10 people today. Okay. So make it activity oriented. That way you can mark it off at the end of the day and you know, you did it. Uh, now focusing on the things we can control, right? The last thing we're going to do is we're going to write one statement of congratulations to ourselves on a job well done. Maybe yesterday you got out of your comfort zone and you shared this business with somebody that you were scared to share it with. Whatever it is, find something that you have done well and congratulate yourself. Guys, this is a confidence game and we need to believe in ourselves before anybody else will ever believe in us. So those are the three things we're gonna start off with and I'll go ahead and write them in the chat for people that are just joining. All right, Courtney, I'm ready, thank you. Thank you so much. So Landy is going to put that in the chat so you know exactly what to do. And what we do during this time, every time we have a task on Power Hour, is we put on a little bit of music. So we're all doing this together. So while we're writing this gratitude, we're going to play a song randomly here. And um, we'll all do this one task together, which is about three or four minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you missed it, again, look in the chat and it'll tell you what to do. Do you have slides? Because um, people joining won't be able to see. I'll be constantly like writing it over and over again. Did you have slides or no? Um, yes, I do have those. I do have those slides. Um, I I don't know if I do for the gratitude, uh, but let me. Okay, let me it's, it's all good. It's all good. I'll just yeah. copy and paste it because as people join, they won't be able to see what's in the chat before. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks. A little mixed up on some of the sounds and stuff there. So um, we're not used to having so many people to do this with at the same time. So um, and then putting the slides and stuff up. So um, thank you for your patience on this. Uh, I hope you were able to do your gratitude. Um, again, we'll have the slides back up in just a second here. Um, 
So um, Landy is going to put them up for us um, so you can know as we're going through this exactly what to do. I hope that helps just so you don't come on and you're like, what are we doing? <laughs> so we just finished the gratitude. And then what we're going to move on next is um, something that sounds super, super basic, but I'm telling you it is it works. So what we're going to do is we are going to go do our birthdays. Now, on birthdays, most people think that, hey, listen, if I go post on their wall, happy birthday, that 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 does it. Listen, if you go post on my birthday, happy on my wall, happy birthday, I'm, I'm not going to see it. And that's what happens to most people. You get, you know, 100 Facebook posts saying happy birthday. We want to make it more personable. You want to get into their messenger. And it gives you the time, like you do this every day, it gives you a full year to go through and message every single person on your friends list, right, for their birthdays. So to find your birthdays, you want to go onto your search bar on Facebook and type in birthdays. When you do that, it'll have an option to click up for everyone today that has a birthday. And you want to send them a private message. Send them a message, happy birthday. Do you have any plans for today? Happy birthday. Um, how are you going to celebrate? Give it a chance to um, to open up that communication. Don't just do happy birthday. And, and listen, I'm telling you what this also does for the next week or two, you're going to start seeing these people in your newsfeed, which guess what? That means they're going to start seeing your stuff too. So again, this is a great way. And also one other thing I like to do is um, before I send the birthday, I go to their page and make sure they're still active. So this gives you a chance as well to go through your every friend over the course of a year you have on Facebook and make sure they're still there. Like they're still active on Facebook. They're still here on earth, you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, if they're not like get them off your friends list because that space is precious. So, um, Landy, do you have anything you want to add to that, to the birthdays? No, I think that's good. That sounds really good. Uh, sorry about the slides. So are you going to share slides? I don't think we can no. share slides and music. So maybe just do the music. And okay. um, well, well, let's do the slide real quick so they can see it. I think that you can, sh you can share okay. the slide and I can do the music because everybody was okay. hearing the music earlier whenever I had it on, I think. Okay. So um, I can share the slide. I just don't. Yeah, but just don't share sound. Off. So just don't share sound, share slides. Let's try that. <laughs> okay, let me try that. Okay. I have the sound sharing. Yeah, we'll here. try to share. And if it cuts off your music, we can, um, whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Cool. Thank you. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and put this slide. Thank you all so much for understanding, too, as we go, we kind of go through this. So, again, let's do our birthdays. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the music back on and give you all about three minutes to do birthdays. And if you've already done your birthdays today, um, just use this time to reconnect with some people through Messenger. I think I think the I think if you're sharing your screen, maybe you can't share music in the background. It's very choppy, so it's not sharing from your computer. I don't know if I can share audio and slides on my end at the same time or not, but or you can maybe, but I don't think both of us together trying to do it is going to work. Okay, I just turned the music off. Let's just keep the music off then. <laughs> Let's see, I, I want y'all to be able to see these slides. That's what's most important as we go through this. So, you know, um, there may just be some quiet on here. Um, yeah. Do you want me and, to try uh, to see if I can share music? music? Corey's saying music's a bad idea. It's so distracting. When we're doing our power hour together as a team, when we're doing it, it makes sense because we're not having to explain as much. We're kind of doing it this way to kind of show you what we do. Um, but, you know, we, we won't have to do the music today. But if you do your own power hour, we do recommend doing the music as you are all working through the task together. Um, and again, that's just how how we've done it. So um, but anyways, let's do our birthday messages and then we'll move on to the next task. OK, y'all, now that we've done our birthdays again, some people have more than others. But listen, I'm going to say one other thing on birthdays. You can always even go back to birthdays you missed. And sometimes that gets seen even more. So if you missed a birthday, feel free to like reach out to them and say, oh, my gosh, I missed your big day. How did you celebrate? OK, so next what we're going to go to is 
we're going to go comment on a Facebook post to 10 prospects. They could be prospects um, for as a customer or a, um, a, a potential affiliate. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to 10 pages and go make a comment on one of their posts. Try to do five words or more. You want to be um, genuine. Um, and um, again, like emojis, you can add that, but don't just count that as, as a comment. You want to be real. Facebook is it's social media for a reason. We need to be building relationships. Um, and again, um, the more that you do this, the more that you're going to start, people are going to start seeing your post again. I'm telling you, you go comment on 10 different people's posts that you haven't posted on in a long time. Um, they're going to be, they're going to be checking you out and, you know, right. And seeing what you've been up to. So again, you've got to give to receive. We can't sit here every day and say, nobody's commenting on my stuff. Nobody's ever, you know, likes my things when you're sitting there waiting around, like you go love on people and you will get it tenfold. They'll come back to you and comment to your stuff. And then again, you're building relationships, you're showing love. And when people know, like, and trust you, they're going to buy from you. Okay, so let's work on that for the next few minutes. Um, and again, 10 different Facebook posts. And if y'all have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, oh, yeah, I'll actually put um, the link for the slides here in the comments as well. So um, if anybody wants, uh, wants those slides. For those that are just jumping on, uh, we're in the middle of doing the um, commenting on a Facebook post to 10 prospects. We're going to do this just for another minute, and then we'll move on to the next the next task. Normally, as a team, when we do this, we'll have music playing in the background as we're doing the task, so it kind of helps, <laughs> but I understand some people are trying to record this and things like that, and uh, you want to be able to um, to post it or maybe share with your teams and things, and again, when we do it live with just our team only, um, we're not recording or anything, so we just play music and things while we're doing the task, so I hope you all understand that. Um, again, I wouldn't be telling y'all to do things that um, I'm not teaching my team to do and our team isn't doing all together. Um, again, uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> anyway, thanks for understanding. Give us another minute and then we're moving on to the next task. Okay, y'all. So let's move on to the next task, um, which is going to be, it's similar to what we just did, except this is for Facebook stories. Um, you're going to go to 10 prospects or friends, preferably the ones that aren't seeing your Facebook currently, and make a comment on one of their stories. What I love about this is you are going right into their messenger, and that's where you want to be. What I also love about Facebook stories is the people that do Facebook stories, they're a little more advanced on um, Facebook. So they um, are people you're not having to go teach how to do a Facebook story if that's someone that joins your team. So what I love to do is you want to go to those stories you're not seeing because those people are not seeing your post. So when you go to stories on Facebook, scroll all the way over as far over as you can and you're going to comment. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not comment, but you're going to go find those stories and make comments to 10 different people. Um, and again, I'm telling you, these people are going to start seeing your post again, right? Because right now they're not. Those people on the far over as far as you can go, they're off in Facebook land and they probably don't even know you exist right now. They're not seeing you. So this is going to get a chance. You're going to notice your engagement going up on Facebook. So let's do this again, um, 10 Facebook stories um, and uh, make it just a genuine comment on, on their story. So, all right, let's move forward and do this. All right, y'all. Um, next, what we're going to do, actually, I'm going to need to share my screen for this part, um, Landy, so it might knock you off for a minute. Um, I'm going to show the. Oops, hold on. Sure. And those of guys that are on here that don't typically build on Facebook, I'm so glad you're doing this today. But we also have Chuck Holmes on the call, and he is a master at other ways to build your business other than Facebook. And so stick around because he's going to be sharing some other things that you can do during a power hour besides Facebook. Just wanted to let y'all know that. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Okay, now um, we'll share the slide in one second on, on how to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you this next step. It is my favorite thing to do on Facebook. I never miss a day of doing this. 
So what I want you to do, can y'all see my screen? Okay. I want you to go to the search bar on Facebook and I want you to type in memories. When you do that, it's going to give you the option to browse your old post. So click on that. And it is going to bring up all the memories of all the posts <laughs> that you did on this day um, since you started Facebook. Literally, mine goes back like 15 years. It goes back a lot. <laughs> OK, so um, what you want to do is you want to go and comment on those old posts because listen, like, I, for example, I posted this post seven years ago. Right. So I'm going to click on it. And, you know, it's had 615 comments. Most of these people, they haven't seen my post in a long time because of the Facebook algorithm. They're not seeing my stuff anymore. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a random comment. Now, you've got to click on it before you can make the comment. I'm just going to click on this and um, say uh, just I'm just going to make a random comment. But what it's going to do is. It's going to send a notification out to all these people that I made a comment on this. It's going to show up in the news feed again. People are going to see all my stuff again. Um, also, if you have, maybe you um, were promoting another product a few years ago, you don't want to delete those posts. What you want to do is go through those old comments and comment on some of those. I'm telling you, this is the one thing um, that I feel like has kept me relevant on Facebook and kept people seeing my stuff. Again, I never miss a day of doing this step. It's super important. And again, it's also going to show everyone that's on your Facebook that post. So um, let's see. So, all right. So I just made um, a comment on that and, and that's it. So we'll go ahead and I'll stop this share and Landy can bring up the slide that tells you about that. So let's go and um, just any random comment, like, for example, I had a recipe there. I can say, oh, my gosh, I need to make this one again. Right. Just any kind of random comment. And look, if you have also some comments um, that you might have missed before, um, it would go back and comment. Even if it's been four or five years ago, like comment something like, oh, my goodness, uh, I never saw your comment. How have you been? It gives you a chance to reconnect with these people. Um, but I'm telling you, like, and guess what? We are nosy by nature. We want to know what people are up to. They So if I go comment on something seven years ago and they see my comment, they're going to be like, what has Courtney been up to? I'm going to go check out her page. See, there it is. I'm going to go check out her page. And they're, they're going to see, right? They're going to start reaching out to me. I'm going to start being in their news feed again. So um, it's all a process, but um, again, um, I, I have quite a few followers on my Facebook, and um, most of them have been following me for at least 10 years, and I've been able to stay engaged with them, and I truly think it's because of this. So, Landy, do you have anything you want to add to that? I was going to add that Courtney has almost 2 million, that's an M, 2 million followers, so she knows her stuff. Let's go. We're going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Landy. Thank you. You're awesome. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the next couple of minutes. Just go through these memories and make some comments. And then we're going to move on to um, some other things here. Chuck, get ready. I think we're going to move on to you doing some things next. So get ready for that. <laughs> now, Nancy is asking, um, does this apply to old comments on a Facebook page for something else of mine I was promoting? Um, if it's I, I would like I would comment to some of this stuff and say, oh, my gosh, like, for example, say you uh, you did you advertise coffee in the past for some coffee company. I would comment on that post and say, oh, my goodness, you've got to you've got to check out what I have now. Or maybe you did collagen before in the past. Comment on one of your old collagen posts and say, oh, my gosh, or however your language like, OK, use your your language and comment and say you've got to check out the new collagen I have now right like some of this stuff or the price of the collagen I have now something like that where they're going to be reaching out to you and messaging you um and do I do this on the Facebook profile group page all of it I do that on on everything um yes 
So Chuck, if you're ready, we'll go ahead and move on to the next thing here, because I know you've got some things you want to share. And then Landy has some more stuff as well. So cool. Chuck, are you ready? I will be. Let and me just hit share. One more thing. Like, I'm telling you, y'all want to listen. Chuck has been in this industry for so long, and he is absolutely amazing. But he does a lot of things outside of Facebook and outside of the what most people do. So if you want to spread your reach even beyond Facebook, you got to listen to this guy for sure. He is great. All right. We good, Courtney? Yes. Thank you so much. Can everybody, can anybody see my screen with my slides before I start? All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Courtney. Uh, thank you, Landy and Michelle, Tim Miller, everyone for having us here. If you ever get an opportunity to speak or train anywhere, do it because it forces you out of your comfort zone. It forces you to grow. It gives you experience and it's really important. So I'm one of those guys. I'm kind of old school. I'm 47, but I'm kind of old school. I, I have a love hate relationship with Facebook. I really admire, especially the ladies who can crush it on Facebook. Uh, it's funny. Uh, one of my team members like Landy can do a post. She gets like 6,538,217 likes. I do a post. I get like two likes. So, I mean, it is what it is. So I, I build most of my business off Facebook. I do have a Facebook presence, uh, but there are other ways to build a business. And I'm here today to teach you how to do that uh, and to give you hope. So I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to the 179 people on this call right now. We've got almost, we've got just over 700,000 people in Live Good and only 180 people cared enough today to spend an hour of their time to learn how to level up their business. So my, my goal, I'm going to help you 180 people level up your business. So let's get into it. A real quick disclaimer. And folks, as a training tool, anytime you do a training, just do a quick disclaimer. Individual results will vary. This training is for educational purposes only. I am an independent affiliate. I'm, an, I'm not a corporate employee or owner. And all of you do have my permission to record this if you'd like to. So this is the bottom line up front. You can build your business in an hour a day if you choose to. All right, success here really is a choice. You have to ask yourself, am I willing to set aside an hour a day and do it every day, five, six days a week, even when I don't feel like it? Because there will be days, you can trust me, where you don't feel like it. You got a lot of other stuff going on, but success is rewarded to people who are consistent. So if you want to succeed and live good, here's what else I've learned. And I can credit my mentor, Mark Yarnell, to teaching me this. You have to find a few things that make sense to you. Because what works for Landy and Courtney might not work for me. What works for me might not work for Tim. What works for Tim might not work for Corey on this call. Everybody is different. Everybody has different personality, different skills, different talents. And the secret is to leverage those things. What you want to do is you want to duplicate the result. You don't have to duplicate it exactly how everybody else does it. But you are trying to duplicate the result in your business. So keep that in mind. And everyone should do a power hour. This is my takeaway for today's training. Everybody should set aside one hour a day where they're organized, they have a game plan, and they have a few key activities that they're going to do. And guess what? Once you do them, you can go chill on the couch with your spouse, watch your Netflix, go for a walk, pat your dog, feel good about yourself because you showed up that day. So let's get into it. This is just a, a simple list of tasks that you can do during your power hour. This is by no means comprehensive. This is just me brainstorming today for about 30 minutes. I put this list together. If you got a phone and you want to screenshot this, feel free to do that. I also have a, a challenge at the end of this presentation uh, where I'm going to make a master slide like this for everyone in the company, but I'm going to need everybody's help. So we'll, we'll get to that at the end. So I'm going to go through a few of these tasks, not in complete detail, but just ideas to get you thinking. Uh, so one thing that works for me is I like to mail postcards. What kind of postcards do I mail? Uh, I had a designer make up some postcards on Fiverr. Uh, they don't say live good anywhere on the postcard. And I like to mail these to people who with network marketing experience. I also have a generic postcard that's blank. And I just draw a big question mark on it. And I put, put an arrow to my website and I mail it to people. Uh, and that works very well too. So keeping it simple is key. Handing out drop cards is good when you're out and about living life. You can leave drop cards at ATM machines, at the gas pump, at the grocery store, at the convenience store, at the library, everywhere and anywhere you go. If you're kind of introverted like I am and you're scared to get scared to talk to someone in public, just say here, take this, 
hand them the drop card and keep walking. You don't even have to say anything. It's beautiful. Uh, you can hand out flyers. You can attend a local networking event like the Chamber of Commerce, the Better Business Bureau, whatever's in your local area. Handwritten notes, that's one of my secret things. I go to Dollar Store or it's Dollar Tree. You can get like 10 thank you notes for $1.25. You can stick a drop card and a thank you note and you can just mail them to someone you know, someone you meet. Pretty cool. Uh, you can wear a button. You can go on eBay or Etsy and get a button made like something like uh, uh, work from home, ask me how, lose weight today, ask me how, get paid to drink coffee, ask me how. Uh, you could just have a little button made up. And the beauty of a button is when you wear it, people are going to look at it. When people look at it, what do you do? You give them a drop card and you say sayonara and you keep on walking. You don't even say anything. Uh, you can do a one hour blitz. I learned about this from a different company. I was never involved with it. But what they taught their reps to do is basically you go out in an hour and you try to, you hand out either a flyer, a sample, a business card, a drop card to 50 people. And you can do it in an hour if you go to a crowded place. Uh, and that's just all out massive exposures. You can connect with other business owners. This is one of my favorite things to do. You Maybe you have a mom and pop type business near you. You could set up some kind of thing where maybe you could leave your business cards on their counter. Maybe you pay them to do that. Maybe you do that fishbowl raffle where people can put in their business card to win a free product uh, and you can get a lot of leads that way. You can text prospects, call prospects. I don't have time to extensively go through every single thing on this list, but take a picture of this list and come up with at least three, four, five things that you feel comfortable doing uh, and do it daily. And, and the question you need to ask yourself is this, is it an income producing activity? Is it, if I do that task, is it gonna lead to more prospects, potential signups or potential customers? And if it's not, don't do it. So make sure you don't mix in busy work with income producing activities. You have to do the right task. So here's here's three example power hours. And, and as a clarification up front, I'm not telling you to do the exact tasks on these three examples. What I am doing uh, is giving you a template that you can use as an example for yourself so you can come up with your own power hour. And what I did, I'll come right back to this slide. What I did was I just took some tasks that I identified on this list and I picked the ones that maybe someone with a certain personality might feel comfortable doing and I created three example power hours. Keep in mind, 190 people on this call, there's gonna be 190 different example power hours. That's great, that's what you want. Teach your team this, show your team these tasks or other tasks that you come up with and help them identify, I keep going back to show you, help them identify three, four, five things from this list that, say, that they say, Chuck, you know what? I could see myself doing that every day. That that doesn't make me feel weird or uncomfortable and help them put together a daily mode of operation for their business so they can do a power hour in their business. So these are just three examples. What I like to do each day personally, I like to create content. I like to do a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, mad respect for Corey, who's on this call. Never met Corey, but he is like the YouTube king. This dude makes more videos in a day. A mad respect, Corey. I've watched most of them. Uh, keep doing good things. So I like to create content. Uh, I like to do through articles. I like to do videos. I like to do podcasts, but you don't have to do that. You could do Facebook posts. You can mail postcards. You could do Facebook lives. You could get on Twitter. You could do Instagram reels. The real key is, like I said, and I, I keep trying to hit home, you got to pick a few things that make sense to you and do them consistently. And these are examples. So take these three options. Maybe you pick the tasks from this list that you like and you come up with your own. And it will work. So here's my homework for you. I like to give little homework assignments. It'll, I think it'll help you uh, be more productive. What I want you to do e either today or tomorrow, when you have about 20 minutes, go outside uh, or go somewhere quiet, even at the kitchen table, just take out a piece of paper and just start brainstorming whatever first comes to your mind that you feel comfortable doing to grow your business. And if you don't know, you can start with this list as an example, if you want to screenshot this, but you can also come up with other tasks. And what you, what I want you to do is I want you to come up with five, 10, 15, 20 things that you think you could do to build your business every day. Then what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself with each, with each item, is this actually going to grow my business or is it just going to keep me busy? If it's something that's going to potentially grow your business, circle it. That's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're going to put that on your DMO. And what you want to do when you're done that task and you have 15, 20 things, you wanna pick the three, four, five, 
or whatever you think you could fit in that one hour block of time. And that's going to be your daily mode of operations. And then what then this is where the secret happens is where you have the self-discipline every day, five to six days a week. You should always take one day off a week for your faith or family. That's great. But five to six days a week, one hour a day, you're doing what's on your DMO, your daily mode of operations every single day. That is where the magic happens in this business. It is not about coming into the business, working around the clock 24 seven for a month and then fizzling out. What the real secret here is to pick a few important tasks and do them consistently week in, week out, month in, month out for a couple of years. That's how you build a big team with Live Good. So put in the work, be consistent. And here's another thing that I have found to be very helpful. Refine, tweak, and improve your daily mode of operations about once a month. So after your first month is done, go somewhere quiet again for about 30 minutes and ask yourself these questions. What am I not doing that I should be doing? What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? And what am I doing that's working that I need to be doing more of? Ask yourself those three questions and then adjust your daily mode of operations based on that. So I need your help. I have a mission for everyone in the whole company and I want to help everybody in the whole company. So what I want you to do, I love seeing people uh, on the Zoom here taking out their cameras. So this is going to be a team effort. I'm going to do something for everybody on this webinar. I want everybody to email me at that email with five things that you do or that you've done that have helped you grow your live good business. And I hope a hundred people email me. I'm going to take all of those tasks, all of them, and hopefully there's hundreds of them. And I'm going to update this slide right here. And then whoever emailed me their five tasks, I'm going to email you the finalized version of these slides for free. I got nothing to sell you with all of the recommendations that people gave me. So you'll be able to have a list here with potentially two, 300 ways that you could grow your business. And you can share that with your new team members and with yourself so that you can move forward uh, with your business. So that's what I have. That's my email. It's mrchuckholmes at gmail.com. Last week, I think I had 15 or 16 people email me for the slides. I sent it to all of them. I hope all 190 of you on this webinar email me with five activities that you currently do or have done that have helped you level up your business. And I will share that with everybody. So with that, that's all I have. Uh, thank you everyone for getting on this. I'm gonna turn it back over to Courtney. Oh my gosh, who is fired up right now? Like that was absolutely amazing, right? Like let me hear in the comments, like how much that helped you. Like, uh, thank you, Chuck. He is absolutely, and he gives so much to so many people. So we are so grateful, so grateful for him. Um, next, we have Landy coming back up. She is going to go over follow-up because that is something, and I want her to tell you some of these stats about follow-up because it's so eye-opening for me because I'm I'm not showing up on follow-up as much as I should be. So Landy, um Miss Landy, take this over. <laughs> Go faster for less with AGL Internet. Save $35 a month for the first 12 months on selected AGL NBN plans when you combine with AGL Energy. Switch to AGL today and join the change. Hey, awesome training, Chuck. Thank God for you because you are the best, the very best, I feel like, at doing online marketing, face-to-face -face marketing, like all the stuff that you can do besides Facebook. And you're actually amazing on Facebook too. So like, don't put yourself down too much there because, you know, go, go to Chuck's page. He's got a good Facebook page going on. So I didn't have any slides, but I actually remembered that I had from an old training I did a couple of slides. So I went ahead and pulled them up. Um, I'm just going to be real quick about follow-up. Um, first of all, a couple of reasons people don't follow up is that they don't have a system. People are literally falling through the cracks. I used to try to keep up in notebooks, um, you know, these kind of little things following up. But let me tell you, you need a contact management system because that is going to make sure that you have people in a file on a computer so that nobody falls through the cracks. Uh, the second reason people don't follow up is that we don't want to be annoying, right? This was something I struggled with for the longest time. Uh, I would share a link. I was really good about getting people interested and then I'd share a link and then I might go back once or twice and then I thought, you know what, I'm annoying them, forget it. Um, let me tell you something. 80% of the people who buy or join you 
they do it after the seventh or between the seventh and the 22nd, 22nd follow-up. So if you don't get to number seven, you are losing so many people. And if your business isn't growing, that's why. So hopefully I can inspire you to find ways to get past number seven, because if you're not getting past number seven, you're missing out on when 80% of people buy or join you. So let's shift our mindset for a second. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. You're not annoying. Guys, you have the best vehicle with Live Good to change someone's life. And you have to believe that at your core. And the only way you can help somebody is to follow up. So if you're not following up, you can't help them. Okay, so shift your mindset because that's going to help you a lot because so much of this business is about posture. And when you truly believe at your core 100% what you're doing, you're going to have great results and people are going to feel that and people are going to be receptive to your follow ups. So um, how to follow up without being annoying. Okay, now, if you share a link with someone about the business or the products, it's great to go in within one to two days, always say strike when the iron is hot. Go ahead and ask them, do you have any questions about the link I sent over? Have you had a chance to look at the link yet? You know, these are nice little subtle follow-ups you can do, but we're not going to just go right in and say, you know, have you ordered yet or whatever, right? That'll run somebody off. People want to buy, but they don't want to be sold to. And if we start selling, they're going to start running. So keep it short, keep it sweet. Um, because, you know, sometimes people don't want to look like a jerk and open your message and see it and see that you saw they saw it and they didn't respond because they just didn't want to yet. And so keep it short and sweet so they can read your message without having to open it. That's another tip. Be consistent. And remember, when you follow up with somebody, it is not about you. It is about them. How can you help them? How can you serve them? It's all about them. Remember that. It's always about them. And there's going to come a time when you need to ask for the sell, right? But what's the key? We got to get to seven to 22. So how are we going to do that? One of the best ways to follow up, you guys, is to continue to post. If you're doing it on Facebook, continue to post on your page. Because as they see you continue to believe in what you're doing, that is going to build their trust in you. Uh, that's going to build that no like, and trust factor. And if somebody has not joined you and they haven't bought yet, it's because they don't know, like, and trust you enough. So you have to continue to post. That is the best way to follow up. Continue to talk about your products and your business. That is going to build their belief in you. And if you're being inconsistent and you're not doing that and somebody else is, they're going to join that person because people want to join the people who they feel like will get them to the finish line and live good, right? So they don't want you to be inconsistent. They want you to be a professional, follow through with what you say you're gonna do and be consistent. So that's probably my best tip on following up is continuing to post. Also, we can um, we can go to their page and we can love and like on their photos. We can continue to show them we care. Massage that relationship, y'all. Relationships are the bedrock of any successful business. So we need to keep massaging those relationships because when they know, like, and trust you enough, they will buy your product. They will join your business. Okay. So if you're, if you're not doing these and you're not being consistent, that's why your business isn't growing. Remember, you have to get from seven to 22. So after you've followed up several times, ask for the sale. Here's some sample scripts on what you can say. If you want to snapshot this, super uh super easy you don't have to be pushy about anything but if you ask not you get not so one of the skills that i struggled with in the beginning was actually asking for that sale hey is the collagen still on your radar when are you planning to order that you know what you'd be surprised how many people will just get off the fence and go ahead you know what i got a few minutes i'll order that today so here's a few more scripts if you want to snapshot that and then we will get going with our follow-ups. I probably need to switch over to Courtney's um, Courtney's slides. Do you have a slide on follow-up? I can't remember. So here's the what if they say no real quick. I'll just cover this. Um, we use the fill felt found if, if they say no when you follow up or ask for the sale. Um, so that is I understand 
is there anyone you know who could introduce me to what you, uh, who might be interested in whatever? So if you're told no, always ask for that referral, okay? Always ask for that referral because also no is just no for now. It doesn't mean no forever. So you can always follow up later again. Um, I think this is probably the end. Um, the important thing is save the relationship. Never, never lose a relationship over a sale. Okay, always know that your purpose is to help them, to serve them. And the only way you can do that is through following up. All right, and I'm gonna stop my share here. And then we can go on Facebook and work on some follow-ups. Courtney, do you have a slide on this? Join One Pass and get free delivery from heaps of your favorite brands. Start your free trial today. Um, I I don't think I did want, you can look on the very last page of our slide and see if you see something. I think it was more about our group stuff though, which I didn't really go over on any of the groups. So I thought maybe that could be another day. I don't know. Whatever okay, you cool. Think. I'll, I'll check <laughs> if we have one, I'll put it up. Thank you guys. If you have any questions yeah. at all on follow-up, just put it in the chat. Yeah, let's just uh, do a few minutes of following up with a few people. And while we're doing this, feel free to put some questions in the chat and let us answer them about follow up um, while we're on here. Does that sound good? So we'll do that and then uh, we'll finish up here in just a few minutes. I also have another little pro tip I'm going to show y'all as well here in a few minutes. And Landy, they're wanting copies of your slides. Are you able to? Um, have that, be able to get that? Yes, I can put a copy of those slides right here in the chat. Thank you. I mean, yes, okay. <laughs> and someone is asking, are we selling more towards the product or the compensation plan? Um, like you've got to figure that out for yourself on what you're, you're you might maybe a product person or you, you may be someone that goes after other affiliates. So um, for me personally, I am more products. Um, but a lot of people, once they try it, they want to sell it, right? <laughs> they want to be an affiliate. So you can get them in either way, just whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, I think Landy is more, um, Landy, you're more affiliates, right? I do a little bit of both. Are you asking like leading with the products or the business? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I like to do both. I really do. I, I think both are very important. I think there's a large audience who wants to use the products. So I do talk about the collagen, the coffee, the things that that does for me. But once I get them interested in the product, I show them the advantage of being a member and even an affiliate. So. And listen, you want to be a product of the product, at least find one product that you love so you can actually show pictures of yourself using it, show videos of yourself using it. Like you got to be excited about your business. You can't sit here and wonder why no one wants to join you if you're not getting excited about your business. People want to join people that are excited and that wants to run. Um, if someone is, if someone we follow up just seeing your message and don't reply, what's the next best move. Um, Landy, what about what do you say on this? If someone is seeing the message and they don't reply, what do you do? Sorry, I was stuck in the abyss. I couldn't get out. <laughs> and... Um, okay, so uh yes, that's where you're gonna if someone if you're following up and somebody says they're not interested, is that is that the question? Or they don't reply. Oh, if they don't reply, so you get ghosted, right? Um, I literally will just continue to spread out my contact with them i don't want to keep you'd never want to keep going into somebody's messenger or inbox when they're not replying guys that reeks of chasing something and if you're chasing something it's running from you so what you want to do is if somebody doesn't reply you want to continue to go to their facebook page and comment on their post um their stories be sure you're just letting them know you're still there they know you shared something with them. So, you know, you don't really want to keep going into their inbox if they're not replying. Now, at some point, it's okay to go in there, maybe, you know, work on the Facebook page and massaging that relationship. Go back in there in a week or two and just put a question mark. That's it. Just put, you know, like, did you hear me? And uh, if they don't reply to that, then I just I just keep spreading it out. I make sure I, I love on their Facebook page, but if they're not gonna if somebody's not gonna talk to me in Messenger, I'm not going to keep messaging them. So that's the best thing to do there. 
Well, and keep, I'm posting, gonna, and keep posting. Posting is the best way to follow up. Trust me, they may not be replying, but they're watching you. They're watching okay. you. So. I want to add something really quick instead of the question mark, because listen, it, if you can make someone smile or laugh, it really helps break the ice. So what I personally do instead of a question mark is I will go find a really funny um, GIF or meme and that something that says hello and it'll have someone peeking around the bushes or if you've seen the one of someone looking through the blinds. <laughs> I will send them that and then I'll just start off a conversation again, not about the product or something, you know, I'll just, it really works. Like if they can smile or laugh about it, they'll, they'll talk to you, right? Because you are like breaking that, um, you're not salesy at that point, <laughs> right? It just breaks that. I don't know if I can explain it the right way, but it does work. <laughs> so, um, uh, while you're all working on that, I'm going to go ahead and give another tip, like still continue on, on follow up, but I want to tell you something else that I kind of accidentally discovered recently. Um, go to, and this is um, how to find your oldest friends on Facebook. So I'm not sure if everyone knows how to do this yet, but I accidentally found it. And um, the reason you want to do this is so many of us, I've had Facebook for, you know, 15 years now. I don't remember some of those people that I added on Facebook in the beginning. And to be honest, a lot of them probably aren't even active anymore. So um, what you do is from your phone, I haven't found a way to do this from the computer, but from your phone, you want to go to the friends icon at the very bottom of your Facebook. And it's going to show you, um, well, first it'll show you friend request. And then at the top, you'll have it'll say suggestions or your friends when you click on your friends it's going to bring up every friend you have on facebook but on the right hand side there's a button that says sort when you click that sort button it'll say oldest friends first newest friends first or default you want to click oldest friends first it's going to show you the very first friend you ever had on facebook and then it's going to go all the way up until to the one that you just accepted. The reason I like doing this is this is something I do. Say I'm watching something on TV and I want to kind of do um, I want to watch my show, but I still want to feel like I'm working my business. I will go through these old friends and I will click on their profile and I'll see if they're still active. Right. Because a, lo a lot of them aren't. And our Facebook friends list, we have five thousand friends. And we think that's a lot, but it's really not. And that friend space is precious. It is so precious. If they're not active, get them off your Facebook. Unfriend them. Like, you, and if you, before you unfriend them, if you feel like you want to send them a message and see if they'll respond first, do that. Or maybe send them a message, and then if they respond, add them back. You know, something like that. But um, I hope that you will use that tool because, again, it's something I accidentally discovered and it's really helping me go through my whole friends list this way. So um, I hope you understood that, like, <laughs> as I explained it. But if not, um, I, you know, send me a message and I can help you with that. So, um, Landy, do you have anything else that you want to follow up with before we're done with everything? I don't think so. I just am so excited that this many people showed up today for their business. And every time you show up for your business, you're telling yourself that you're important enough to show up for. Like we always show up for everybody else in our life, right? We show up and we make lunch for the kids, whether we feel like it or not. Uh, and some days you have to show up for yourself and your business, whether you feel like it or not. And that's what I think sometimes power hour is because we do it consistently but it's the consistency that's going to win in the end. It's never about anything else. It's about consistency and continuing to do the same steps over and over again until you get the result you want. So that's all I have. Thank you guys for joining us today. Yes, thank you. And, um, you know, also, I just want you to know, like, when it comes to the end of all this, because I, I, I have built a pretty massive following and a lot of people are like, how have you done that? How do you do this? I truly feel like it's all about relationships. It's these activities that I do on a daily basis, whether or not I'm on the phone with the call with my team or not. Like I do these things daily. 
network marketing is all about relationships. We can't put out post after post after post and join my team here and like my post and all these things if we are not doing the same for other people. You've got to give to receive and you've got to get excited about your business again. I know I've said this before, but you can't sit here like Eeyore come join me. Why is nobody loving on me? Why is nobody liking my stuff when you aren't even excited? You aren't even excited about your business. Would you want to join you? Like that is the million dollar question. Would you want to join you? If not, get it together. Like figure it out what you need to figure out to get excited about your business because we have an opportunity that can change your life. And I know this because 10 years ago, I met Ben Glinsky, I met Tim Miller, and I joined a business called Skinny Body Care that Ben Glinsky created, and it changed my entire life. It took me from facing my fourth eviction to paying cash for my very first home. It changed my entire life, and this industry can do that. But again, you've got to get excited. Make that decision that you are all in and you're going to do these activities to build your business and your life won't look the same. Your life will never be the same, right? And guess what? It's not all about the money because, but I am going to tell you, the more money you make, it means the more lives you are changing, you are helping to change. So it's all in your hands. Um, again, just go back to basics. Go back to basics and be a friend. Love on people and just be a friend. Um, and then, um, Chuck, um, Michelle, do either one of y'all have anything that you want to add to all of this before we end? I would, I would just tell people the best thing, my number one tip, find one or two team members that you can do this with every day. Instead of doing it just by yourself, reach out to your team and try to ask people, Hey, Hey, Landy. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Courtney. Uh, I'm doing a power hour every day for the next week. Would you like to join me each day? And we can all do it together and work smart. And you all get on a Zoom just like this and you do your task together. Maybe there's not a lot of talking, but you do it together because the power of two or four or eight or 10 is always way better than the power of one doing it. That's all I got. Thank you so much, Chuck. Um, Michelle, did you have anything you want to add? She might be, she might be, uh, busy for a second, <laughs> but it's okay. Listen, I want to thank y'all again for showing up. I want to thank you to my team for showing up for this and thank you to, to all of Live Good. Y'all, again, there's 181 people on this call and again, 700,000 people in this business. Right now, you should give yourself a pat on the back for showing up. You did great today. And again, take these simple tasks and run with them. Run with them. Get at least one of your teammates to go do these power hours together. Chuck is right. And you can build your business. So anyways, y'all have a blessed day. Um, it, 